the time is the beginning of October 1920. The Polish-Bolshevik War has been in progress for over two years now. The stakes include not only the future shape of a newly reborn Polish Republic, but also the very independence and sovereignty of Poland. A great battle on the outskirts of Warsaw, deployed from the banks of the Wiepsz River, has forced the Bolsheviks to retreat. A newly created cavalry corps in Wołyn, led by Colonel Juliusz Rumel, is set to conquer a town called Korostien, a critical railway junction of great importance to the Bolsheviks, providing their army with technical support and provisions. The destruction of Korostien would completely paralyze communications on an entire frontline section. Polish troops now have to face the infamous armored trains, spreading fear among the soldiers. Heavily armed and reinforced, the trains fiercely defend the town of Korostien. The Soviets do not realize that the Poles are in control of the situation, thanks to the breaking of secret communication codes and constant radio monitoring. Where was I? Ah, right. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? My name is Jan Kovalevsky. In July 1919, I was a newly promoted lieutenant assigned to serve in a communications intelligence unit. On most days, I would operate from the Saski Palace. But I was to work in the Warsaw radio station in the Citadel that very night. And it was exactly then that we managed to change the face of the war to come. There you are. Here we go again. Power down. Lieutenant Kowalewski, the city's cut off power again, sir. Seems like a good time to wake our little dragon. I know, I know, I'm on it. Never had the chance to start this engine, though. There should be a torch here somewhere. What do we have here? The sequence seems quite simple. Let's see how it works. Ah, that's not it. Wrong sequence, maybe? Air valve open. Now, quick. The fuel valve. We do have fuel. Halfway through and now, ah. The switchboard. Have to be gentle. Where's that damn fuse? Can't hear a damn thing, sir. We could use that. We 
could use that. Sir, I can't do a thing without an antenna and a radio. Without antenna power, that won't work. Without antenna power, that won't work. could use that. <laughs> Three times lucky. Interesting. Hmm. We could 
use that. Switch the antenna on too, will you, sir? Without antenna power, that won't work. Without antenna power, that won't work. Without antenna power, that won't work.
Dradolok. First voyage behind us. Now we have to start the radio station. Sir, I can't do a thing without an antenna and a radio. Without antenna power, that won't work. Left one done. All set. Sequence again. What's the sequence again? worked. Gosh, got them. I think I can hear something, sir. Sir, Lieutenant, sir, we have signal from Lviv. Here's my dispatch. Let's see if the comb idea works as in my concept. The word division must be hidden here somewhere. There are three letters I in it in Russian. Comb teeth broken out. Let's get to it.
I must find three identical pairs of digits. I think number 10 repeats. Amazing. I think I really found it. Yes, just as I thought. This way, I can decode the entire alphabet. Amazing. I think I really found it. Yes, just as I thought. This way, I can decode the entire alphabet. A comb does not seem to be a sophisticated cryptological tool when you think about it. Anyhow, it was this simple method that allowed the Polish intelligence to break the Delegate, a Soviet cryptographic cipher. From then, events unfolded quickly. Within two weeks, a new organizational unit, the second division of foreign ciphers, was brought to life in the cipher section with Lieutenant Jan Kowalewski as its commander. Outstanding mathematicians were invited to help break the codes. Professors Stanisław Lishniewski, Stefan Mazurkiewicz, and Wacław Szerapinski. Polish intelligence gained a powerful tool and intended to use it. When they started establishing voluntary regiments of Chevaux Légères in July 1920, Anua must be part of one. Who, if not Jan Hluzinski? Sergeant Major Jan Hluzinski. Honestly, everyone in our HMG squadron thought precisely the same. Nonetheless, I was not expecting to be assigned such an important mission just three months after the 201st Regiment was formed. It is the 8th of October, 1920, and I have no doubt that Korosten will soon be ours. Our boys in the radio intelligence have captured the location of maps showing the positions of all armoured trains in the area. Somebody must break into the Korosten stronghold and access the safe in one of the officer's wagons, quietly. And who could be more fit for the job than Sergeant Major Jan Gruzinski? Not good. There's a bunch of them hanging around the railway depot. I must be careful on my way to the generator room and prepare an escape route first. <laughs> 